Hello everyone! Today we're talking about creating depth with acrylic paints through layering. Paintings are like onions. They stink, they make you cry, and they have layers. When I first started dabbling in painting, I always got discouraged by the first couple of layers because they almost always look horrendous. It took me a while to get used to layering intuitively, and if you're in the same boat as me, which is no art education, not even accepted into AP art in high school, sifting through YouTube at 2am, like a goblin type of artist, then this video might be for you. Okay, let's go! Layer 1. I've based the canvas in black so you can really see the buildup of paints over time. I've selected my go-to pink, yellow, and blue background for today because I want the focus to be on the paw. I'm starting out by basing the canvas with my colors, working the paint back and forth with a little bit of water on my brush to help the paint glide and blend. Because this is just the baby layer, I'm focusing on coating the canvas evenly, and I'm not going to get bent out of shape about the exact brush strokes or the shades of the colors that I'm using. Probably. You can still see the black base underneath the pastels, so we're going to let this layer dry completely before going back in with more of the same. Layer 2. I'm going back in with the same colors to increase the opacity of the background. Opacity? Opacity? This is a word that I don't say out loud very often. <laughs> Correct me in the comments. Go ahead, I can take it. Now I'm going to focus more on blending the colors together and pulling the occasional brush strokes into a different area of the background so you have little pops of color throughout. There are lots of different ways to blend acrylic paints, which is kind of a subject for another video, coming soon. But you should keep two things in mind when blending wet as opposed to dry brushing. A little bit of water goes a long way, and if you blend too long, you'll have to worry about something called underbinding. Underbinding can happen when you use too much water and cause the mediums that hold the acrylic paint together to separate too much. This can cause your paint to flake or chunk together, especially if you've been working on one area long enough for some of the paint to have partially dried while you're still applying fresh brush strokes on top of that area. It might take some practice to get a feel for these things, but generally I try to work in short bursts, allowing the layers to dry completely before starting again. Layer three, I'm going back in one more time to refine the colors that I want. I added too much yellow to the pink area here, but I decided to correct it by just adding more pink and white and blending that section together. Sometimes you gotta work with your mistakes. At this point, the black base of the canvas is completely covered and I'm comfortable with this being the last background layer. Layer four, I'm using a reference photo of my dog's paw on my phone. I've been practicing sketching with paint directly onto the canvas, but this used to terrify me. So don't be afraid to use a pencil, chalk, or even a stencil to help you outline the subject of your painting. There's no right or wrong way, so just do what makes you feel comfortable and grow from there. Once I'm happy with the outline, I'm going to block in the basic color of his paw. So handsome, my handsome son. Placement doesn't have to be perfect. The beauty of working in layers is so you can adjust things as many times as you'd like along the way, so don't stress the small stuff quite yet. This is where the magic of layering comes into play. So we could easily stop at this stage. Our subject is recognizable and the message of the painting, dog feet's cute, is pretty clear. However, if we keep going, we can add some more depth, a little bit of realism, and some personality to this piece. So we're gonna let this bad boy dry, treat yourself to some snackies while you wait, or do what I do and just begin another painting so you have an endless stack of paintings judging you from the corner of your room. All right, layer five. Using my reference photo for guidance, I'm going to start blocking in basic but more accurate colors on the paw. Usually at this stage, I'm just working on laying in the mid-tone, the darkest tone, and the basic highlight area. So light, medium, dark, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. I find at this stage, squinting or letting my vision go a bit blurry when I look at my reference photo helps me out a lot to tune out the finer details like small hairs or the texture on his toe beans and just focus on which areas are lightest and darkest. I also highly recommend stepping back from your painting to view it at a distance on occasion to give yourself a different perspective while you're working on it. We want to avoid mouth breathing on your work for two hours and then stepping back to realize that the scar's on the wrong side. It's okay to take your time at this stage. You might find that breaking this layer down into even more layers to focus on each value or each shade of light to dark helps a lot. You do you, 
I think it's also important to mention that you don't need to have every brush stroke smoothed to perfection. Actually, I found that I began to enjoy painting a lot more when I embraced having some chunky brush strokes instead of trying to make everything look perfectly airbrushed. Depending on your style, you may prefer to work in more defined and bold brush strokes. It's up to you. It's up to you. Play with it and have fun with it, especially if you're taking up painting for the first time in a long time. Layer six, we're looking pretty good, but I still want to refine the paw a bit more. I'm using a really abused fluffy brush to stipple both light and dark colors onto the paw pad and create texture. Don't be afraid to play with different brushes. They are your tools and there's such a variety of them. The wrong brush can hinder your progress and the right one can make the job so easy. So don't be afraid to play with yours until you get a feel for what you like. Again, you might feel more comfortable breaking your details down into stages. I've seen some artists work on one area of the painting until it's completely finished and then move outward from that area doing the same. And I think that's a really incredible way to work. So figure out what works for you and what makes you feel comfortable. I'm a really intuitive painter, so I just kind of go with my gut feeling. Layer seven, I'm feeling satisfied with the paw pads, so I'm gonna start adding the finishing details on them. For this project, that means adding the lighter pink color that appears in patches and adding the lightest highlights and touching up the darkest shadows. Sometimes I use my fingers to lightly blend out an area. No rules, only art anarchy. Adults are taking back finger painting this year from the toddlers they have arraigned for far too long. Layer eight is the best part, I think, which is starting in on the fur texture. I'm using the aforementioned abused fluffy brush, which is really just a rounded flat head brush that I've had for so long that the bristles are completely sticking out in all different ways. And instead of scrapping it, I realized that it was perfect for things like grass and fur. I also have a small detail brush that I can use for individual hairs or really small details, but I want to avoid having to manually paint every hair. You'll see that I'm adding some darker gray areas to the white fur, so when I detail this area with highlights, it'll really help those highlights to pop. I'm still using my reference photo, especially to help me with the directions that the hair flow on the leg. I'll switch from my smaller detail brush to my fluffy brush, depending on how dense the fur is in certain areas. Layer nine is an extension of the previous layer. I let everything dry, and then I went back in for another round of defining certain hair and highlights, and adjusting any area that I think deviates too much from the reference photo.
Layer 10 is more of the same, adding final highlights and deepening shadows and overthinking things, making mistakes that I have to undo, questioning my career choices, wondering if I should learn how to oil paint instead, even though I'm afraid of it, and thinking about lunch. At some point when I'm painting, I'll know I'm close to being finished when I've either overworked an area so many times that I feel stuck in a Groundhog's Day loop with it, or sometimes magically when I feel satisfaction when I look at my piece. That one's few and far between. But at this point, I'll usually decide on the little details that I want to finish up the painting and maybe walk away for a little bit to really let my brain decide if we're done or if we're about to go off on this piece again. Layer 11 is the finishing touches. My usual go-to is sparkles or little stars around the piece. But since my last round of commissions, I've really been enjoying painting this little glowy aura around whatever my subject is. So I'll add in any last highlights I want, fix any boo-boos, make my cute little aura, and that's it, yay, we're done. A subject like layering is so broad that it's hard to feel like I've helped anyone by making this video. But the thing I hope you take from this is that if you're stuck on layer four or layer six and you feel like that's the extent of your abilities, take a break and come back to your painting later. Layering can change everything up. So take your time with it. Use your reference photo. I love you guys. Thank you for watching. I hope this, this video helped someone. And uh, drink your water and raise hell and take your meds and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.